I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. police officer who was on the trip acting as Henyard security. Realizing a crime may have been committed, the officer is said to have asked Holmes to FaceTime. The lawsuit says Krusty Holmes then panned the camera toward a bed where the officer could see a woman who was partially undressed. Now WGN Investigates has obtained a copy of a statement made by the alleged victim to South Holland Police 10 months after the incident. In it, she said the officer told her he could see via FaceTime Holmes was not wearing a shirt and that he walked over to where she was sleeping and pulled her clothing back, exposing her private parts. The police report also says the woman said there were bodily fluids on her shirt and she saved it as potential evidence. <laughs> They got to be accountable to you. But in all seriousness and all jokes aside, I want you all to listen to me because I am going to use my words very specifically. I am not saying alleged. I am telling you all that I was directly told. Now, we limited the conversation because I do not want to become the witness in, a, um, in, a, in, a, in this particular type of case. But what we were told is that it appears that Andrew Holmes does have a liking for women. Now, we do understand that he has a Nick, San, Nick Cannon uh, um, size amount of keys. Him and Nick Cannon is running neck and neck and making sure that the black population is consistently on the rise, whatever. But what we have also ascertained in our findings is that it also appears that Mr. Andrew Holmes has a liking for underage girls. And there may be a bit of grooming that have taken place. Now, what has happened or what we have been uh, able to understand from testimony, testimony of individuals that we will not mention. I've talked to some parents. I've talked to the friends of parents and what it has or has been said and what has been alluded to and what we are now looking further into is that there are four, but out of four or two uh, that 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 we have uh, literally got specific information about of individuals that are underage. Now, this is where the shit gets interesting and it takes a real interesting turn for me. He is a well-known Chicago activist known for his work at crime scenes and helping grieving families. But now Andrew Holmes is out of a job. The nonprofit he worked for says he's been terminated amid a lawsuit and allegations that he assaulted a former co-worker. Holmes also serves as a trustee in the village of Dalton. NBC 5's Regina Waldrop with tonight's story. We in the, the most dangerous areas at the most dangerous time at night. His name, his face, synonymous with the fight against Chicago violence. We are just concerned about the child right about now. On TV screens and in newspapers, Andrew Holmes stood with families during their most difficult times. He met with dignitaries, received countless awards for his work as a crisis responder. But in the wake of allegations against him, now the group he worked for, Chicago Survivors, says Andrew's been terminated. A statement to NBC5 reads, our mission is to provide crime victim services to family members of homicide victims, so our relationship with those families and our community is paramount. Without compromise, there needs to be strong mutual trust and an assumed high level of safety for the adults and children we serve. For those reasons, we terminated his employment in April upon learning of the serious allegations. I'm fighting for every woman. Holmes also serves as an elected trustee in the village of Dalton. He's being sued by Fania Dukes, Mayor Tiffany Hanyard's ex-assistant. Dukes filed this civil lawsuit against Hanyard and Holmes. She accuses him of assaulting her. 
Dukes issued this statement last week describing the lawsuit's allegations. Until my last memory was me waking up in his room. In this video, she details what she says happened before and after an incident that allegedly occurred almost a year ago during a taxpayer paid economic development trip to Las Vegas. On that trip, Henyard, a handful of village and Thornton Township reps and trustee homes. According to the lawsuit, after dinner and walking the Las Vegas Strip with Holmes, Dukes felt disoriented and ultimately blacked out. Holmes has not responded to our repeated requests for a comment. Mary Avant is a retired Chicago police officer. She says the allegations are serious and Chicago survivors did the right thing. I think it's a little bit of being careful because they have to be concerned about themselves and the look it gives them. And many residents and also some trustees are calling on Andrew Holmes to step down from the village board. Reporting from Dalton, I'm Regina Waldrop, NBC5. Known for his work as a crisis responder helping victims of gun violence, Andrew Holmes has also served for several years as a trustee in the village of Dalton. Holmes is now named in a civil lawsuit filed Monday by a Dalton police officer and former member of Mayor Tiffany Henniard's security detail, as well as a former village employee who believes she was sexually assaulted by Holmes. We are withholding her identity because of the nature of the allegations, which are now according to four Dalton trustees, part of what former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot will take on in her new job as special investigator into Mayor Henniard's tenure. She will be looking at it in a civil manner to, the, to uh, get the, give the board an idea. This is not a criminal matter that she's looking at it from that perspective. The complaint says the alleged incident took place during a trip to Las Vegas in May of last year that included Henniard along with various employees from the village and Thornton Township. It was during the last evening of that trip that the complaint alleges police officer Byron Miles received a phone call from Holmes who began describing a host of his exploits from the trip many of a sexual nature. And there was some suggestion that she may not have had the ability to consent and or did not provide consent. It is at this point that according to the complaint, Officer Miles began to record the call, which eventually switched over to FaceTime. Trustee Holmes then panned the camera toward a bed where Officer Miles could see a woman who was partially undressed. The complaint goes on to say that the following day when the woman in question woke up, she found she was in Trusty Holmes' hotel room, fully dressed. She was embarrassed as she believed she had blacked out. However, it was not, according to the complaint, until their return to Dalton that Officer Miles, suspecting that the alleged victim was not aware of what had transpired, went to her with what he knew. The lawsuit alleges that at a later meeting with the mayor, Henniard stated, if that information got out, Henniard would be ruined and all of the work she had done would be lost. According to the lawsuit, within weeks, the alleged victim was out of a job and Officer Miles removed from the mayor's security detail. The lawsuit asserts claims against Henniard for retaliation. While our calls to Andrew Holmes have gone unanswered today, a spokesperson for Tiffany Henniard said they are cooperating but would not comment on an ongoing investigation. They did, however, point us to a statement issued a few weeks ago before Holmes was specifically named saying that the village of Dalton previously conducted their own investigation into the matter. Former police officer Miles was interviewed and denied knowing anything about these allegations. Also, despite numerous attempts by the village's independent investigators to contact the employee, she refused to give a statement or cooperate with our investigation. Unfortunately, this is nothing more than two disgruntled village employees who are trying to make off with the taxpayers' hard-earned dollars. I want books, not bullets. So now this family has to go through this pain. Our teenagers want books, not bullets. Andrew Holmes is best known for comforting crime victims' families in Chicago. Keep this family happy. But he's also an elected trustee in South Suburban Dalton. So I'd like to take my hats off and tell them to him. Where he's an ally of embattled Mayor Tiffany Henyard. It was on a taxpayer funded trip to Las Vegas last May, where Holmes is named and accused in a civil lawsuit of taking advantage of Henyard's then assistant after a night of drinking and smoking marijuana. She said she blacked out and woke up in Holmes' hotel room. 
The civil lawsuit claims Holm called to brag to a Dalton police officer who was on the trip acting as Henyard security. Realizing a crime may have been committed, the officer is said to have asked Holmes to FaceTime. The lawsuit says Trusty Holmes then pan the camera toward a bed where the officer could see a woman who was partially undressed. Now WGN Investigates has obtained a copy of a statement made by the alleged victim to South Holland Police 10 months after the incident. In it, she said the officer told her he could see via FaceTime Holmes was not wearing a shirt and that he walked over to where she was sleeping and pulled her clothing back, exposing her private parts. The police report also says the woman said there were bodily fluids on her shirt and she saved it as potential evidence. Holmes has not been charged with a crime and has repeatedly denied wrongdoing. He told me last month that he was simply trying to help a younger colleague who was disoriented. The woman and the officer say they reported the incident the day after the trip to Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard, who promised to take action. But the woman says she was soon fired and the officer was reassigned. And that is not the only news out of Dalton. Let's be smarter than that. This is, this is not just the price is right. Tiffany Henyard's top aide in both Dalton and Thornton Township, Keith Freeman, was charged with bankruptcy fraud for allegedly lying and hiding his income from the village. Legal experts say the feds could use the charges to squeeze Freeman to share what he knows about any corruption on Henyard's watch. Nobody is untouchable. So if this is just uh, the first domino to all of them falling, let it happen. Henyard's spokesperson declined to comment on the charges or say whether Freeman is still on the government payroll. Ben Bradley, WGN Investigates. Absolutely, Terrence and Don. Good evening to the both of you. What you see behind me right now are about 30 or so residents that are still standing by. These residents were unable to get inside of that meeting tonight. To our understanding, the meeting is still underway, um, but probably most notable, Hinyard's former assistant, who has now filed a lawsuit against the mayor and well-known community activist, Andrew Holmes, who's also a Village of Dalton trustee. This woman claiming that she was sexually violated during a work trip that happened that woman spoke to reporters today for the first time listen in Outside the village of Dalton, residents eager to address Mayor Tiffany Hinyard and her administration. Inside, about 50 seats for residents. Ten people did speak during public comments, once again demanding Hinyard and her administration resign. Residents spoke about wanting justice for unsolved murders, the current sexual assault allegations, and simply wanting answers about the village's finances. All of this comes as five subpoenas have been served to the village, asking for payments, expense reimbursements, and credit card expenditures involving Hinyard and her top assistant, Keith Freeman. Now, subpoenas all also indicate the FBI is looking into complaints by Dalton business owners whose license requests have been rejected. Henyard's charitable donations are also under review. Now, take a listen tonight for more of residents speaking inside of the meeting. I am pleased that Trustee Holmes is not here, although I ask him to suspend himself with a little integrity. I don't think he's done that yet. You are going to be, and it's unfortunate, in a six by eight cell in North Carolina because you're going to the federal joint. This is what it's going to take. Next election, we got to vote around. Period. We can't have a bunch of people running us out. She got in by 100 votes, not 82%. She got one by 120 votes, 4% of the vote. Greetings, family. How you doing? This is your boy, Jedediah, a.k.a. Black. And as you know, I am home here in Illinois. And I'm specifically here because I was asked to look into the matter, uh, matters that are surrounding Dalton, um, Mayor Tiffany Haynard, loosely, and primarily Dalton trustee and av av activist 
Andrew Holmes. The video that I'm calling in the Andrew Holmes report, and this is our findings, okay? This is the findings of me and my team, and so it is basically going to be our opinion based on what we've gathered, and so I want you all to take that. Uh, some things I am not going to say because we are turning it over to individuals of a uh, more official capacity in hopes that they would further look into and review the information and do what they're tasked to do in their professional and official capacities. So now let's get into it. So the first thing that I would like for you all to understand is that we have spoken to somebody, I cannot say who, a lot of cannot say this, that, and the third, but cannot say who, but there is uh, no federal investigation that is going on with Andrew Holmes. There is no federal investigation that is going on with An uh, Dalton trustee Andrew Holmes right now, but we cannot confirm nor deny the potentially confirmed investigation or probe into Mayor Tiffany Hanyard, if that makes sense. But officially, it is ruled out that there is no federal investigation of Andrew Holmes at this time. If there was at uh, any point, if there at any point, did you say anyone told her she didn't know? Um, at this point, what we also are understanding is that if there is any charges that are gone in extradition to another state like Nevada, then the U.S. Marshal may be in, involved in a transporting, but there is no federal uh, agency that's looking into him for a federal crime. But we do find it to be very interesting that he is a elected official in the city of Dalton, whereas we who have found people that have committed murder and have kidnapped people, do you all know that in a small town like Dalton of about 20,000 people, we cannot ascertain or confirm the official residence of Dalton trustee Andrew Holmes. And as we trace it, it looks like that this man potentially has not even lived at the place listed as his official residence for years to come and that there may be other individuals in there who are not affiliated or directly connected to Andrew Holmes. We don't know where he lives officially. That is a problem because you got to live there to represent there, to vote there, to pay attention there. Uh, and to be a man of his stature and to lie that he lived there, if he don't, is wrong, unethical, should be criminal, means he's disqualified to run as a trustee in the village. All right. Uh, the next thing that we understand, I had the opportunity to go to Dalton myself, and I talked to several residents, and there's a climate and a culture of fear. People are in Dalton afraid to talk or say certain things because they're afraid of the police department. Does that make any damn sense to y'all? People are legitimately afraid of the police in the city. And ain't it only about six of them motherfuckers? Y'all can take them. But okay, don't be afraid of the police. The police ought to be accountable to you. They got to be accountable to you. But in all seriousness and all jokes aside, I want you all to listen to me because I am going to use my words very specifically. I am not saying alleged. I am telling you all that I was directly told. Now, we limited the conversation because I do not want to become the witness in a um, in a in a in this particular type of case. But what we were told is that it appears that Andrew Holmes does has a liking for women. Now, we do understand that he has a Nick San, Nick Cannon uh, um, size amount of keys. Him and Nick Cannon is running neck and neck of making sure that the black population is consistently on the rise, whatever. But what we have also ascertained in our findings is that it also appears that Mr. Andrew Holmes has a liking for underage girls. And there may be a bit of grooming that have taken place. Now, what has happened or what we have been uh, able to understand from testimony, testimony, of individuals that we will not mention. I've talked to some parents. I've talked to the friends of parents. And what it has or has been said and what has been alluded to and what we are now looking further into is that there are four, but out of four, two, uh, that, that, that we have uh, literally got specific information about of individuals that are underage. Now, this is where the shit gets interesting and it takes a real interesting turn for me is because if he has had a consensual sexual relationship 
with underage girls that have been groomed, you got to deal with that, right? There's a level that you got to deal with that. But then they're telling underage uh, accounts are saying that basically he may have been involved in a little bit of grooming. And one of the things that it appears that Andrew Holmes has uh, potentially done is he had taken these underage girls, which means y'all might have seen, this to what I'm going to say out of my goddamn mouth. There may, there, it is alleged that, that, uh, that some of these individuals, these underage girls, that they've had these relationships with, although consensual, he have taken them with him to crime scenes. What? So Andrew Holmes uh, potentially have brought underage female companions with him to crime scenes. Uh, we do have names. We do have images. I'm not lying to you guys. And that stuff not only is being turned over, we are looking further into it, but I've talked to some parents and I've talked to the to the to the uh uh to parents of some friends of four individuals, and that is sick as the as the absolute hell. And I am not saying alleged because of a certain reason. So I would love for Andrew Holmes to sue me. I would love for Andrew Holmes to sue me. For what I just said, because it will help me give the. It will help me give the information that I am giving. Now, the next thing, if you are a person in Dalton that have any further information about this, you need to reach out to me immediately. Because even if it was consensual, if they were of a if it wasn't of a legal age, that is a crime. And you cannot have a person out here passing out flyers for rape victims and people that have done acts like this and then they turn around and do it. It doesn't work. Now, the next thing that we have gotten or found and ascertained in this Andrew Holmes report that has been interesting to us is that it appears that Mr. Andrew Holmes is getting to the bag. He ain't just getting, and he ain't just out here frocking. He out here getting to the bag. And so what has been a long-standing problem with people in advocacy is y'all think we don't got no jobs. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. Andrew Holmes might be the most Jamaican activist I know because on paperwork, if you do the research, this man got hella jobs. And the crazy part is, is that, damn it, these are full-time jobs. So I'm trying to figure out how the hell did we get a Jamaican activist in Chicago and didn't appreciate this man for how damn hard he working. Seven full-time jobs, and they seven, but damn near Jamaican number full-time jobs and still got time to come out here and help y'all with y'all pain, y'all drama, and y'all issues and experiences. So it looks like he has a job with the CTA full-time. Look like he was getting paid from the board of the village of Dalton. It looks like he's getting paid from a foundation. Now, I'm going to pause right there in the foundation that he also works for full-time, the Andrew Holmes Foundation. Oh, shit. Is he a junior or a, 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 is he the third or the fourth? Because you mean to tell me that I could have been out here working in my own name, in my own name, and honoring my own name? She. I'm going to start the Jedediah Brown Foundation, and they better pay me. So it looks like he works for the Andrew Holmes Foundation. I don't know what the fuck they do, but that is he also worked for Chicago Survivor. Chicago Survivor. Uh, and 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 full time. So one of the issues with the Andrew Holmes Foundation that we found to be quite interesting is that he is not only in charge of everything, but he's also the accountability. How the hell you got a whole organization where you are the the leadership of the day to day and the leadership of the board? Who could check who was going on? So I mean, I guess that happens. That's the ghetto shit we do do now. I ain't gonna lie. Now I didn't thought about getting somebody kid and getting me a little couple, a few extra thousand dollars over the, over over this last year, but I didn't do it. But I know people do it. So we ain't going to be out here pointing fingers at niggas who are out here trying to survive. That ain't what we're going to do. But I will say this. Based on the information and our findings, if it is in fact the actual truth, um, 
If he's getting money into an organization that doesn't have true accountability, the problem becomes that it's money that's coming for accountability that, uh, uh, or for advocacy that affects your life. That's where our issue would come in. So it looks like the Andrew Holmes Foundation may have gotten grant money and or gotten grant money through a firefighters association of some sort. I am not indicating or saying that they have done anything corrupt per se, but this fire company, it might have get, have gotten hundreds of thousands of dollars that then as a fiscal agent, they give to the Andrew Holmes Foundation, et cetera. There's a few traces of things like this and that money then, I guess, is you apply for payroll or whatever projects they do. I cannot confirm nor deny the day-to-day -day work of the Andrew Holmes Foundation because I am not, I was not aware of them before this weekend, nor do I really give a damn, uh, but I do know for a fact he working on them jobs and he's the only person that's really listed outside of his grant child if i'm not mistaken uh in a real sense not they knocking on the door um, if he's getting all this money and it's unchecked, then that means that donated money that's coming to an organization to do a work is not um is not uh, being handled, it could potentially not being handled properly. And if he's getting all of these sources of income um, as, as as a man working all of these full-time jobs, then we need to see some W-2s as my IRS paperwork. Because damn, Andrew Helms out here doing too good for the hood, advocating and paying all these taxes, because I know he's paying them taxes. And I know he ain't had no money. And I know they're not still in foundation, money, and they, or they just might be. So we have found not only issues with his residence, we found issues with the income and the potential reporting of things. Uh, we also were able to read in detail the report that was made, uh, the report that was made by the young lady. It is an egregious report and I would encourage you guys to do a FOIA, a Freedom of Information Act of the actual reporting that was done against him at the situation in Las Vegas. Um, but, um, somebody, they're they trying to get my attention and now they throwing me off. It was, I was getting to the good shit. Outside of the potential underage, um, uh, uh, sleeping with an un underage women, uh, potentially stealing money or misusing money as an advocate, uh, we have also spoke to several people who he have advocated for. And I will emphatically and in fact tell you that I have a somewhat confirmation that Andrew Holmes don't do shit. Okay? He don't do shit. And so what these people who have spoken to us in testimony are saying is that Andrew Holmes have come to crime scenes. He will do the newscast and he will stand next to them while they're crying. He ain't doing a damn thing it, as of late or before he disappeared after the sexual assault allegations was on the way. He has not done anything. And there are people who are upset because they confided or trusted in his advocacy and he did not do anything for them. Uh, he didn't even get them connected to resources bogus as hell bullshit so maybe after or not working for chicago survivor which i'm not i'm not completely sure if he works with them now or not he ain't got shit to offer he could just come and be seen with you uh and then he gotta go um but outside of all of that you all it looks like he is a model citizen protecting our women Hello. where the men at i love it I love it. And you know what I learned? You don't need a whole lot of people. You just need the right people. So one more time, let's make some noise for the brothers out here. But I want Pania to know that this is a safe space. And I want to give her this microphone. Turn the volume all the way up. And uh... Is it okay if we clap while you're talking? Because if they hung, we're going to clap. <laughs> but we're going to hear from Fania, and we're going to allow her to express herself on this very important block. Because there's something very important on this block. And we got your back. That's right. That's right. Because if I don't, I talk really fast and y'all probably gonna miss everything that I said. <laughs> so I do want to thank everybody first and foremost. Seeing everybody standing out here, you don't even have to tell me that you support me. 
seeing your faces and your eyes land on me and my eyes land on you and I can see you and everybody that's watching me right now, I can feel your support, I can feel your love. And it took, it was like, I've, I've been through struggles a whole entire year by myself and I didn't know who I could talk to. I couldn't even tell my roommate, my best friend. And I knew if I did, he'd probably be somewhere in jail too, thank God. But I, I had to. Take your time. Take your time. I'm not gonna keep crying either. This, this is I, I gotta get past that because now I'm angry. But I, I had to hold it in though. Like I, I literally didn't have nobody to talk to after literally going to somebody that I really thought was gonna handle and help me. Turned on me. That made me feel like I don't have nobody I can trust. There is nobody out there that's gonna believe me, that's gonna listen to me. That's what I felt. I didn't even think that I would have this many people standing in front of me. We got your back. I know. We ain't going nowhere. Come on. Come on. We stand with you. Thank you. But you, sir, yes. mm -hmm. I don't know who told you to come on my behalf, but thank God for them, too. Mm. Infinite blessings yeah. for them, too, That's for thinking right. about me to send you. And for you, first and foremost, I didn't expect you to come the way you, you came. I didn't know nothing about you. I honestly mm. thought that you were just flashy mm. until we talked. Until I heard you talk, until I heard you talk from me, till I heard you pray. 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 Yeah. 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 Whenever you tell me, ask me, you know what you're supposed to go back to, right? <laughs> you ain't getting no clacks on that one, okay? <laughs> but, 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 most of all, I want Justin, so. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's a big no. But I do want to say I was one of those people who actually did believe in the mayor. I'm still going to give it that because I've seen the different things she was doing. I honestly thought, yes. We deserve a skating ring. Yes, we deserve new streets. Yes, we deserve roofs and, and windows and all of that. And and you taking me under your wing, I'm thinking that, yes, ma'am, take me, show me the ropes or whatever. And for, for the betrayal that I never imagined you would do in front of my face, it's like you spit in me. Like you were disgusted in me bringing this to you. And I loved you like a sister, like a mother, like, like an aunt, like a friend. So I'm glad that y'all all stand here next the to me. Do. Let's march on and keep marching. We gonna see this fight to the end. Absolutely. Cause either jail. That's that's jail. Jail. <laughs> 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 jail. That's all I, I got nervous. Well, <laughs> and they're not here. But I do want to to publicly apologize to the trust. trustees one because being on her side, I didn't see from their eyes. I didn't, I didn't stand for where they stood at. And for them to stand, they could have looked at me and say, well, I don't care, or you, how you, they could have looked at me and, and told me, no, we don't care what you, but they standing next to me. Thank you. Thank you, Jason House. Thank you, Tammy Brown. Thank you, Brittany Norwood. Tiana Belcher. I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making me. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. You know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. Nothing is perfect for anybody.
I don't know. What was I swear? I think I figured it out. You know why? They don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along. You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.